Okay, so um, good day everyone. I'm Andre Jax Valiaria, an undergraduate student from the Philippines. And I'm here to unveil a world hiding within our country's mangrove forests. And this is the assemblage and diversity of epiphytic lichens in different mangrove habitats of Oriental Mindoro Philippines. Together with me in this study are my advisors, Dr. Seb Salmo, who is also here with us today, and Dr. Lani Dacones. And this study is the first of its kind to track restoration and colonization progress in mangrove forests using lichens as indicators. So let's get started. What are lichens? Okay, so we traditionally know lichens as the binary mutualism between fungi and algae. And they form an ecologically important terrestrial symbiosis with 20,000 fungal species worldwide and around 5% are known to occur in the country. Yet despite this, lichens are relatively understudied. And nowadays, we understand lichens as an extraordinarily active community comprising hundreds of thousands of fungal filaments, algae, even parasitic and commensal yeasts, bacteria, archaea, and even microinvertebrates like tardigrades and nematodes. And lichens are found everywhere, and they also serve many economic uses because of their secondary metabolites. Their growth is also sensitive to changes in the air quality, thus making them useful bioindicators to track impacts of air pollution, disturbances, and climate change. And from here, they can also provide clues on stand continuity and succession stages in various inland forest ecosystems. But that does not include our mangrove forests. And we all know that these are essential ecosystems providing ecological and economic services in our coasts. However, they face several threats in our country, in the Philippines, and that includes climate change, water pollution, and the more worrisome would be land use change through fish pond conversion, which has become rampant in the Philippines since the 1970s. And because of these threats, this study was a response to that urgent need for an assessment of the biodiversity status of our mangrove forests, especially that of the understudied lichens. And also, we wanted to put more value in lichens as indicators in these coastal forests, which then may inform decisions and actions for mangrove restoration and conservation. So to get started with this breakthrough, we selected the mangrove forests of Oriental Mindoro province in the Philippines as our study site. So we had to get our targets straight, and the first thing we did is to identify the epiphytic lichens and the mangrove hosts they attach to. And then we described the patterns of assemblage and diversity of lichens according to these three habitat types. So first, we have the old growth natural stands as reference models or reference sites. And in our sampling location, we have these three natural sites of different ages. And the second type are the abandoned fish ponds that were later colonized by mangroves. And in the study, we have two colonized sites still of different ages. And the third type are our mangrove plantations. And in the Philippines, these sites are often characterized by trees belonging to almost one single species. And they are often planted in the wrong regions, unfortunately. And we only have one planted site in this study. And we chose these three, ha three types of habitats of different ages to see how lichen assemblage and diversity change during succession given that fish pond conversion as our um, major disturbance. And aside from habitat type, we also considered zonation for our third target. And lastly, we used the old growth natural stands as reference sites to describe the restoration and colonization progress in the younger and more disturbed colonized and planted stands. So overall, we covered 11 sites with replicate plots considering zonation from three different towns of Oriental Mindoro province in the Mindoro Island that is found in the Philippines. And sampling was performed in two different periods. So this is the summary of our methods. The first part is recording and collection in the field, followed by identification, and then from here, we scored the species abundance based on the presence and absence of one lichen morphospecies 
per branch per tree. And um, we also calculated for the frequency of occurrence of lichens per mangrove species. And we also compared the diversity across sites and across the nation using six diversity indices. And we used the Ray Curtis dissimilarity to assess the lichen assemblage across sites and zonation and visualize the patterns across these sites through non-parametric multidimensional scaling or NMDS. So here are our results. Now we have discovered 28 different species of lichens and all are coming from 12 different Ascomyce families. And the most dominant family of which is Gravidaceae, which is also the uh, most dominant family of lichens that is found in the Philippines, in the Luzon Island in the Philippines, and in tropical South Asia and in Southeast Asia. Other similar families also occur in nearby tropical mangrove forests in the region. And this study also shared 11 genera with the only Luzon inventory we have in lichens of mangrove forests in the Philippines. But this time, well, we're happy to report nine new genera of lichens in our local mangrove forests. So here are some of our lichens. We have the two polios lichens down there, um, the Renaria aplanata and the um, Pixini cocoes. We also have the Crustos lecanora on top, and this is Graphis scripta. Now this is part of Gravidaceae. So here are some of the new genera observed in Philippine mangrove forests, and we have here Philopsora, and then Leiruma, um, Pyrenula, and Trespania. But we are not yet sure if they are new species records. And among the five dominant trees, lichens are found in majority of um, the four mangrove species, except in Avicennia marina, which exhibits bark flaking as an adaptation to salinity. So having a saline bark may actually inhibit or not promote the growth of lichens. But there are some lichens that can tolerate this, like Graphis and Lecanora, we've seen that earlier, that can grow in the younger stands before the bark flakes off. So usually for older Avicennia marina stands, they do not have lichens. And also, um, 11 lichen species exhibited single host preferences, but most of these lichens were rare that they are only found in one tree. No? So um, there are exceptions to this, like Pyrenula, which is also found in more than 10 trees of Soneratia alpha across different sites. And then we compare the lichen diversity per site using three representative diversity indices converse, that is the one below, N sub 0, N sub 1, and N sub 2. And um, what we can see here is that there is a significant difference for one plantation and two colonized sites as seen in the red outline photos on the right, and versus the three natural sites that are outlined in green here on the right. Uh, that's on the left, rather, <laughs> sorry. And um, yeah, so here we can see that the younger and more disturbed sites have lower diversity scores compared to the three natural sites. And this one is the NMDS ordination plot showing the lichen assemblage of 11 different sites in our study according to the abundance scores of each lichen species per site. So, so each um, red point is actually one lichen species clustered within this matrix. So the closer the two sites are, the more similar they are in terms of lichen assemblage. Yeah. So we can see here that nearby sites cluster together so the town of Bongabong would cluster together as outlined in the green. And um, so is true for the towns of Mansalay and that of Rojas. So, but this is not generally true for all the sites telling us that habitat heterogeneity is still evident, which is actually a characteristic of ecosystems at a landscape level. And here we also observe, interestingly, an a zonation gradient. No? We can um, see that landward lichen assemblages below are separated from the seaward lichen assemblages above with the midward assemblages in the middle. However, here comes an exception, which is the case of these landward plantation site, no? whose lichen assemblage is clustered within the midward and the seaward zones. So they, these monospecific uh, planted rhizophora stands now, naturally grow at the midward before the seaward zones. And from here, we can see the implications of monospecific planting to biodiversity. This practice modifies the natural habitat heterogeneity 
which in turn can alter our faunal and floral diversity. So the patterns observed in lichens were actually also observed in the assemblages of birds, mollusks, and crustaceans in the monospecific or monogeneric stands of mangrove forests relative to the natural stands. And also, natural sites which are all clustered at the seaward site in this study tend to cluster together in this ordination plot. So this actually implies that lichen assemblages are likely to be similar as they approach the forest's natural state. And interestingly, we saw the inclusion of the Bongabong colonized stand, which is also the seaward zone, that is approaching the natural cluster, which suggests that lichen assemblage in this 35-year-old mangrove colonized fish pond has already approached the lichen assemblage seen in the seaward natural sites. So, from a disturbed state, mangroves have naturally colonized abandoned fish ponds, and natural colonization may be fast-tracked with assisted natural regeneration through science-informed human intervention for mangrove restoration. And the same way may be applied for the earlier plantations we've mentioned and the other colonized sites that are yet to approach this reference state, only if restoration is a priority. So from here, we conclude that Oriental Mindoro's mangrove forests are a unique space for Philippine lichen diversity. And more importantly, lichen diversity and assemblage may serve as indicators for restoration and colonization progress of mangrove forests with the natural sites as reference models or sites that are anchored on international standards for ecosystem restoration. And lastly, we also have highlighted the use of lichens as reliable indicators of succession in these coastal ecosystems. And I hope from this moment, we will value lichens more than just patches on trees, but as helpful tools to guide our restoration efforts in mangrove forests. We would like to thank the Institute of Biology in the University of the Philippines, the Liman, the U.S. Forest Service, USAID, and the um, uh, National Academy of Sciences in the U.S., and to the organizing committee of MMM6 that made this work possible. Thank you very much, and I'm ready to take your questions.